Watson's a guy that could really lift this Utah program. We're going to talk about some of their other guys, but look for Madsen tonight to maybe get it going from behind the three-point line, which would help Utah stay in this thing and potentially win it. So when you look at the starting lineups, of course, for Arizona, newest name is Courtney Ramey. If you haven't seen the play yet, we'll introduce you to him. Tonight, Umar Balo has been a revelation as a starting center. And for Utah, four of those five starters started both games against Arizona last year. The newcomer is those five starters started both games against Arizona last year. The newcomer is Ben Carlson, who had played previously at Wisconsin. Yeah, Ramey only went 10 for 16 from the three-point line in Maui last week. So pretty good addition there for this Arizona team. Look early for switching coverages from Utah. I think it's a smart move by Craig Smith. If you just play one way defensively, they'll eventually get a handle on it, especially in ball screens. Watch how Utah will change what they're doing. And right away to Ballas launches, but there's the long rebound. Larson first to it. Well, Utah will live with the Zulus Tabella shooting threes all night long. Not to say he can't make them, but you'd rather have him shooting threes than the high-low action. And look at that. Yeah, Carlson right out of the gate. He's been blocking a lot of shots here early yeah. in the season, which is something new for him. Throughout his career, hasn't blocked a lot of shots, so not great to see him add that more of a paint presence and rim protector. And look at that right away. Carlson playing up top, pulls Ballo out. And Wooster posting up yeah. Ramey. And now Carlson, you know, he's that... Well, we've seen him a lot, but that Euro style big guy, he can do that. He's added that. He can make that shot. Do you want him out there all night? No, but if he can make one, let him go ahead and do it. But, but if you're Utah, do you want Carlson to play up to keep Ballo outside? Well, it depends. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're going to keep switching this up. They're going to switch on, on screens. They're going to switch on ball screens. But Carlson, that's what makes him effective is, is him and his ability to step out behind the three-point line. Would like to see Carlson be a little more physical. He's really worked hard on his body throughout his career here at Utah. He's gotten stronger. So both. Be a force in the paint at seven feet, but then they put a big on you. You can take him out on the three-point line and knock down threes. Interesting. Just thinking about this watch in practice today, you did the quick little count. Brandon Carlson Really the only guy that's playing right now for Utah. That's a holdover from the Christovia here it's a couple of other guys that are also on the bench, but Carlson's the only one that really plays minutes That's how quick Frank Smith has turned it over Look at that taking ball over. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about off the dribble penetration post up be a multi-level score Inside to get to Bellis, trying to back in against Carlson. Well, you can see what Utah is doing as we take a look at Carlson. See, this is what happens when you make a three. Now, the sudden ballo has got to get out there, right? Yeah. Now, you drive him, put it on the deck, and score. What Utah is doing defensively, at least here at the start, is leaving the high guy alone and packing the paint on the low guy. And so they'll give to Bellis, follow that free throw line area jumper versus, versus letting him go that high low and scoring inside. Sorry, it's the first time I've seen Arizona this year. So that's the first in person. And just how fast they up that ball and get it to the rim. Well, the thing they do that not a lot of college teams do, and they do it almost every time, is the throw ahead lead pass. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever gets it, lead pass out. Now you're playing with numbers against a defense that isn't set. That's how you average 97 points a game, which is what they're averaging right now. It's just so much fun to watch, and that's yeah. why they were such a brilliant offensive team last year with their passing and their assists. Yeah. Now they go right over the top. Ben Carlson was in front of Ball. Here's the thing. Arizona is so balanced offensively that if you take one thing away, they'll give you another. Look at Ballo on the holdoff, and they shoot a ton of free throws, Arizona, because teams don't get back in transition. They're out of position. They foul. In the half court, that high-low, you let Ballo or Tabellas get that deep, you're beat. What are you going to do? Foul him. So... The addition of Courtney Ramey and his ability to make threes makes that high-low action even more lethal than it already is. Did Ding Ballo start here at all this season? 
only shooting 61% from the free throw line. And he gets fouled quite a bit. Yeah, he's been averaging about eight foul shots a game, so that number needs to be better for him. Creasa back. Lob to Bellis. Deflected. Job by Carlson to poke that out of there. Not a good start, a great start for Utah here in this one. And a good officiating crew here, and you saw it at work right there. Good yeah. no call. Marco Anthony, one of the best rebounding guards in the Pac-12, and saw it there, just couldn't finish it. There's a double. They stay with the double. Oh, and Balo launches one. See, if you commit to that double and don't double and then rotate out, that's what you're looking for is cross-court passes that you can intercept. No one could have intercepted that pass. <laughs> well, Tommy Lloyd. Even if it was a little uptight conference opener today. Yeah. It's a place, look, it's always tough to come. Well, altitude, it's a historic building here. And the other thing, Ted, is you win Maui, everyone's patting yes. you on the back. All of a sudden, you're number four in the country. Carlson gets the easy two. And then you had a bunch of days off. And so, yeah, this is danger zone. And you can kind of tell here. At the start, Arizona or Utah is taking it right at Arizona. That's a second launch by Tavellis. Amen. He'll live with a great game plan here early from Craig Smith. Back there it is. A little pick and pop, and Carlson has started with eight points. You can do that. Let's see what if Arizona makes an adjustment. Randy answers. Right back at you. Man, what did Craig Smith say to us today about Randy? He knew the number right off his head. Yeah. And right now, Randy shot the ball in balance. Yeah. Well, didn't play the first three. I did a couple of those games, and they kept talking about Randy and talking about him. And, you know, he averaged 10 points a game in Texas, which isn't bad, but it's not like he was 20 a night. But right away, Maui, you can see the effect of Randy and his ability to score and make threes. Bounce back to Balo, and he does a good job. Patience. He's so strong, and he's got long arms. Not a lot of lift on Balo, but he's got great footwork, and he makes those plays. A lot of bigs get down there, and there's traffic and defenders, and they miss. He hardly ever misses that deep in the paint. Now nice shot, Marco Anthony starting. And the Utes back up five. Ooh, and right on cue, he missed one. Yep. Well, I had to go to the left hand for that. What a nice pass by Tabellis. That high low is loosening up a little bit. Oh, Madison's shot spins out, and the ball is going to be fouled. It'll get us to the first timeout. We got a lot of seven footers in the league this year, Chad, in our Pac 12 conference, but I don't think any of them should. So I just think for Carlson to really maximize what he can do. He's worked so hard on his body. I mentioned that. Be both of those things. Be the stretch guy, but also be the force in the paint. And I'd be intrigued if you pulled the free throws out of your thing there and said he's blocking shots without foul. Yeah. That's positive, isn't it? But what if he was more physical down there? Maybe he blocks even more shots. I mean, 17 through 7, about two and a half a game, which is good. But it's seven feet in the length he's got. Who knows? All right, personnel changes out of the timeout for both teams. There's Kiba Keita in the game for Utah, along with Wilgins Exact, Henry Vesar, and Cedric Henderson in for the Cats. This Keita guy is bouncy, man. Number 13, Kiba Keita. Well, you look at Kiba Keita's size and you see Balo on the other side, you understand how vital he's going to be in matchups like this. Well, and that's the thing is, is Craig Smith's got some depth in the front court. So if it comes down to it, you got fouls to give. Guys that can come in and be physical and not allow it to be easy for those Arizona bigs down there in the paint. Tommy Lloyd sent a message here early. All right, Henderson goes through the paint. Is that last time? No. Madsen didn't hit the ball, so Utah has it. I think 
the complexion of the game right now, Ted, is exactly what Utah wants. It's not necessarily slow, but it ain't fast, and that's what Arizona wants. Continue to get buckets and get to the foul line. You can keep it at this pace and not allow it to get fast for Arizona. And Creesa. They saw it right there. It's going to be good. Really good. A lot of work to do in the weight room, kind of like we're talking about with Carlson, but skilled, got good hands, just needs to get stronger. Wooster's kickback. Stefanovic also in the game for Utah. But missed it all. We haven't, we haven't mentioned Raleigh Wooster yet. He's not made a jump. He looks better this year. Body looks better. Playing with more confidence. He came, took a step up last year from Utah State yes. out west to the Pac-12. I think he's probably more comfortable and confident now after with a year under his belt. Freshman guard Kylan Boswell in for Utah. 17 years old, Ted. Boswell. Unreal. <laughs> they Whoa. saw. Ooh. He's going up. Looked like he was going to try to pound that. He was going to pound it. Utah's trying to get off, even though they have the lead here. They missed their last four. Right, really, Carlson back in. I really think, Ted, that the way the game looks is just as important. That's the score. Is it the way the game looks? Yeah. yeah. Meaning the pace? Yeah, the pace of the game. Like, even if Utah got down some, if it stays at this pace, you got a chance. But I haven't seen a team, maybe ever, play as, as well fast as Arizona does. Mm -hmm. oh, out of bounds. Madsen there, so the ball comes back. I, that's you're so... Well, we have to go back to Loyola Marymount. It's funny you say that. I thought about that today. It's a more organized Loyola Marymount with a little bit of defense. Well, I, that would I played against those Loyola yeah. Marymount teams. They wanted you to score exactly. just so they could run the other way. Arizona defense. Whoa, there's a nice grim block by Larson. Madsen, Madsen hits a three. And that's one thing. We, we talked to Craig Smith about this today. And all the focus on Arizona shooting. Utah did not have a very good shooting no, last year as a team. Their numbers are up so far this year. They have to keep going. Madsen's a big part of it. 100%. And I think Madsen, he's got a great catch and shoot game, too. Like, he can come flying off of down screens and off of actions to where he gets his feet down quick and lets him go. This one's a busted play in transition, but not a good sign for Arizona. See Madsen see his first or second one go in. He's the kind of guy that can rip off three, four, five threes in a row. And, uh, Craig Smith going into his bench again. Mike Saunders gets in the game. Ramey back for the Cats. Adama Ball gets the first look. Utah just so packed in, just daring Arizona to shoot these shots based on who the personnel is. That was a like they're, attempt to lay that up there for Carlson. Their coverages, Utah, are dictated on personnel for the most part. So, like, on a ball screen on Boswell, they would go underneath. You would never go underneath a ball screen on Ramey or Creaser. Well, let's look at this, Don. This is over eight minutes. Arizona has nine points. Yeah. Averaging 97 a game. Well, that takes care of the single digits on the setup. Basar has a slam. And that's the thing. Utah could got, have gotten off to any better of a start. But they're only up four. But again, I go back to the, the style of the game right now, where it needs to be for Utah. Can Arizona speed them up? Ooh, Stefanovic snuck in there. And the, and the interesting thing about Arizona, Ted, if you think about it, their style isn't unique, but it is in the sense that they've perfected how to play this way, right, early in the season. They are going to see so many different approaches on how to play them as the year goes on. That's right. And if you're going to win in the NCAA tournament, you have to win playing different styles. What a pass by Stefanovic. That was nice. And Carlson... We'll be at the foul line when we come back. Utah 
running it back in Arizona. CJ McConnell. He's, he's, probably, there. he's probably the front runner for rookie of the year right now, Mathurin, in the NBA. And TJ McConnell's famous for this reason. When anybody asks me, is that guy an NBA player, meaning any player, I said, you never say never because TJ McConnell has played in the NBA for six years. Yeah. Exactly. You never say never. Exactly. It's a great call. And it's a huge compliment. I mean, I, I yeah. take, because I know you're saying that as a compliment it to is. TJ. Yes. Still turns out. Been, still should have been player here, but that's another story. Turns out that there's other things other than just measurables that could make you an NBA Absolutely. player. Follow in. So, so good down there. we just had a four-minute stretch of the game without Balo and Tubelas on the floor. Now we come back with Balo, but no Tubelas. Well, I think that was a, hey, guys, why don't you come out a little early and maybe we can uh, recalibrate ourselves in this one. Dama Ball back. <laughs> Kirk Kreese is getting a rest now, so freshman guard Boswell will be the... Theory would be running it. Watch Ballas footwork down here. He is so good. Again, doesn't go over the top, doesn't have great lift, but always under control, uses his strength to clear space, and then the footwork step through right shoulder jump hook. Talking to Tony Padilla, or as he's now known, Tony Bahama. Yeah. Turned on the uh, Thanksgiving event for the Bahamas and our good friend Tony yeah. from Sacramento, <laughs> somehow in the Bahamas. If you, want, if you want confirmation on the game plan here early for Craig Smith, we opened the show saying Arizona shoots 60 for, from two, 45 from three at the last timeout. Arizona was 22 from two, 11 from three. Carlson's miss goes out now. Tubelas and Creesa back in. You know, only down five. Utah with the great start, and this does not look like the Arizona team we've seen so far yeah. this year. But still within striking dif distance, obviously. Ball down low to Ballas. Can't finish it. Ben Carlson. I think Brandon Carlson got a piece of that. See if they give him credit for a block. I'm looking at didn't see ball play much like that. Oh, why are you go? Blow by for Mike Saunders. The old fake DHO. Think you're going to hand it off. You keep going. Nobody home for Arizona. See how they're leaving Tabellis? You can't force it in. Tabellis has got to drive that and then shoot the little floater or kick it out. Watch this. A little hesitation. Ah, nope. Oh, no. See you later. We can't take a look at that last offensive play for Arizona because to, they're leaving Tabellis. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead, shoot it if you want. But Tabellis has got to make somebody commit on that. Drive it, nobody comes, you lay it up. If somebody comes, you shoot the floater or kick it out to a shooter. Or drop it off to Ballo down there. Wow, tough shot by Riley Wooster. Look it up. It's not like Arizona shooting a great percentage either, but they've made some tough ones. Uh, again, this is uncomfortable for Arizona. I think this is the first time all year that they've had to play this way. Like every game they've been in the 80s and 90s, Ballo gets the offensive rebound. But like, and I said it earlier, this is probably, you know, Tommy Lloyd doesn't like to score. And if they come back and win this, hey, we saw a different way of playing. We figured playing. We figured out a way to win the game. We're gonna have to do that in March. Yep. Well, you made that point pretty well, Tommy Lloyd. See, the trick is you got to come back and win the game. Well, he's also watching and a lot of good shots that haven't gone in in this first half for Arizona. There were two of them right in that sequence. Kreese's ball bounced all around the rim, and then Ballo missed his first two foul shots tonight. I think when you start a game, Ted, and I don't know what Tommy Lloyd's thinking, but when you start a game with a guy that doesn't shoot barely any three, shooting a three and missing it, yeah. it kind of sets you down the wrong path immediately offensively. Now, the other thing we haven't touched on yet, 
the decision Craig Smith was going to make tonight about who guards Kirk Creasa. It's been Riley Wooster. Was that Creasa had a triple double on this floor yeah, last did. year? He did. And has not had that kind of impact yet. I bet you Wooster hasn't forgotten that. And I didn't ask the question. I should have. There's a high out. There it is, right there to Malo. Um, and we still, I mean, we're now. This is a long stretch without Tubelis being in the game. Yeah. I was going to say, did Wooster go to Craig Smith and say, let me check him this time? Maybe. Hopefully. Make Arizona guard. Saunders That's what Utah's there. doing. That's a tough shot. Boy, ball's length really yeah. noticeable there. Yeah. I didn't see much of Adama Ball last year. Boy, man, this, his wingspan is something. Another young guy, too. Yeah. All right, there is the young man from France right now. It is Utah, this growing team under Kirk. Get into this conversation whenever a fast team is slowed up. How do you fast it? Got to get stopped. Turn them over or get them to miss and get out. It's easier to slow a game down than it is to speed it up. Greaser went down and he gets up with a little bit of a hobble. Good sign. Wooster gets in and Wooster oh. makes another shot at the basket. Second one for him. Tough finish in traffic. Points of the paint conversation. Right now, that's a, Utah's had a couple of nice finishes at the basket. For the most part, Utah's done a good job of limiting Arizona in the paint. Ooh, Creasa with a whip. Ballo couldn't hold it. A lot of mustard on that pass. I'm yeah. not sure that was that for Ballo. Oh, really? I think it might have been the Henderson on the weak side. Okay. Because that was a fastball. Yeah. Stefanovic getting in. Nice. Well, Utah. Utah doing it with the drive done. Yep. Attacking Arizona and making them guard. That was that wasn't late clock, but they made them guard the initial actions. Stefanovic with the nice 12 footer. Missed by Pella Larson. Wooster out running. Utah has a chance to really put a mark on this last six minutes of the half. Ah, great spot. And Kata scores it, and that forces Tommy Lloyd. They call a timeout, and after a long set, uh, sentence of bench time, Tubelis 12. All right, Arizona, Tubelis has been out of the game for nine minutes. A nine-minute stretch of bench, and now he's in. Maybe it's got to be somebody else for Arizona, yeah. Ted. Maybe Pella Larson gets it going. Henderson, Ramey, somebody. Now, Krisa has not said has not been able to impact this first half no points only one assist Wooster in again whoa and there's the rebound by Keita back up and finally cleared by Ballo see stop get it down Marco Anthony that jumps the passing lane they are doing a not a good job a great job on the defensive end team averaging 97 coming in's got 16 with five and a half to go in the first half. It's not unbelievable. Nine, yeah, nine Arizona turnovers so far. Nine. Stefanovic. And, and Utah keeps going. That's eight straight for Utah. I'm not exaggerating, Ted. Arizona usually has 16 by the under four yes. timeout. Or under 16 timeout, I mean. Arizona with nine first half turnovers, four of them coming in the last three minutes. But everything's challenged. Yeah. Passing lanes are yeah. challenged. Shots at the rim are challenged. Everything is. Except for what they don't want to challenge because they want you to take that shot. They're dictating what shots, what open shots are getting. Uh, there's just all the position, and that's what the obvious fear for Utah was is that ball of size nice. and strength inside would lead to too much of that he's such a load you can't move him out of there and then he's got the long arms he sticks up there and just reaches above everyone tap that thing in
open for Ben Carlson to hit. I tell you who's really played a great first half is Wooster under control, attacking yes. the paint, yeah. scoring himself. Great kick out there for an open three. Good cut by Larson, but he tried to dunk it. Great backdoor play, no finish. And now Utah starting to run it back at Arizona. Carlson, oh. and he does finish. A three and a thunderous slam Late for the Minnesota. Late rotation by Tabellas. Carlson back to back hoops. Well, the Utah fan base that's all geared up for a football game tomorrow night is finding tonight a heck of a lot of fun. The bus is going nuts. Wow. You got a lot of beefs, and I feel like you're the only one that will listen to all my beefs during a game. <laughs> I'm joining with I'm joining you on a lot of them, Don. <laughs> Come on, why do you think Molinari's losing all his hair? He just got done listening to me through a full football season. <laughs> uh, it's good. Tabalas, there's his first make. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah. He's, a, he, he's got to put his imprint on uh, this game. He's been nowhere so far in this one. All right, so so join me on this. You were we've been talking a lot of Tabalas. Creasa. Does he have to put his imprint on the game? Yeah, but they're doing a good job on him. But Kreese's job is to get other guys set up first and foremost. Wooster again. But, again, I, I keep going back to the game plan, Craig Smith. They are executing this perfectly so far. The immediate again. double, and that creates, that creates a turnover. So there's automatics in, in an offense like this for Arizona where if a guy doubles, the, the big cuts to the front of the rim. And... Utah is covering all these reads up. Yeah. I don't know how many hands they've gotten on passes and stolen them, but a, a masterful job by the Utah defense so far to hold this Arizona team to only 20 points. Crazy. Wooster runs into foul line traffic. Kane to try to post up Vasar. And Wooster hits. Here's the thing. Arizona stayed attached to Madsen, too. Ramey won't leave him. So that's why Wooster's getting a little room. There's no help there. And he's he's getting in the paint at will right now on this Arizona defense. I mean, honestly, if you were talking about a head-to-head -head matchup, Wooster's winning this first half decisively. I wouldn't count Kirk Kreese out yet. Oh, no, no. Just first half. To Ballas. Bradley started the game, trying it, and on the third one, he makes one. Craig Smith's over there saying, tip the cap, he Amen. made one. We're going to keep giving them to him. Looking to push. Larson on the right wing. Arizona's got to finish this half with a little momentum. Yes. Couple stop scores to finish it. Try and get it under 10 or at 10. Last two minutes and a half. Exactly that thought. Be the better team here. There's a block on Utah. We've not had an abundance of fouls, which is good. I mean, this is shocking because, again, I did a couple of their games early. I watched their games in Maui. Like, this is an offensive machine. They, they beat ranked teams in Maui, right? And had those numbers that you see on the left. Look at the ones on the right for 18 minutes. It's an overcorrection, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're on the Arizona side. He's out here. Minute 52 going in the half, so if they can win these last two minutes... At least feel like you got some momentum back right. a little, even if you're down 12 or 13. Well, if you score 97 a game, you would feel 12's not insurmountable. Right. But again, the theme of the night, I've said it five times, they have to get the pace going in this round. If, they, if it stays here, it's going to be awfully hard for them to win this game, I feel like. Tubella's getting a little bit of action going. Tubella's does have two fouls. Going to sit him here for a minute. Vesar also has two. Wooster, Anthony, and Brandon Carlson all have two fouls for Utah. The thing I like about this first half, it's been a high-level game, but it hasn't been a lot of fouling. Right. Right. Utah credit, like, they're, they're holding Arizona down offensively without putting them on the foul line. Whoa! 
Okay. Somebody's going to have to shoot. It's going to be Stefanovic. Nope. It's going to be Wooster. Wow, look at Kata in there for the rebound. Well, you have a guy right there that just had 30 and 13 in the championship game in Maui. Follow. And Kava Kata goes in there and gets away with the for ball. Four down. Kava Kata, just do that. Yeah. Just get on both boards, rebound at a high level, and run the court. And we'll continue to improve with all the other stuff. But you, you can affect this game with that effort. Henry Vesar will sit here for him. That's his third foul, by the way. Henry Vesar just picked up his third, so he's sit. Zach is back from Utah, replacing Ben Carlson. Decent stroke at the line, too, Kato. Improved with confidence. Interesting part of this half. We're going to end up Brandon Carlson's only going to play nine minutes. Craig Smith has protected him with two fouls. Well, and there hasn't been any drop-off. Exactly. I haven't really needed him. Hey, what, Wooster's been everywhere in his first half. Oh, nice feed and Keita! Man, this could have been a, a more perfect half-court possession for Utah. Amen. Use some block, get a layup at the end of it. Nothing's perfect, but this is, to me, Don, will feel like a time capsule 20 minutes for Greg Smith. Put, yeah. this, put this in the vault and show well, us. This I, the we should. I thought about this, Ted, because you and I discuss things like this when we do games, but... And I, I should save it for the second half, and I will, but, like, what this does for a second-year coach in a new program. Yeah. You follow through and win this thing, what a confidence wow. booster, not only for this team, but the optics of it everywhere else. But still got a long ways to go. All right, not the last possession. Oh, five seconds. Stefanovic does not advance the ball. Closely guarded, five seconds. So that gives a free shot here back to Arizona to end the half. 17, you can cut it to 15 or 14 here, Arizona. No Rady on the floor, no Tubelis. They go flat here with Freese up top. Anderson comes out. And it's Greasy with the shot fake. And Abdama ball finally. Oh, and a foul. No, they call it the, the leg kick call, out. Yep, they're going to call it a ball. I thought they were going to call it ball. the leg kick. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, too. There's been a lot of that so far this year. Got on early to try to set a tone. And then by February, March, you know, they're hoping to let people play. Yeah. Uh, it's with Craig Smith right. draws up here. Six, yep. It's just going to be a three-quarter court heave. But this is going to be a well-earned ovation that the running youths get when they leave the floor. And Arizona probably feeling like they took a shot to the jaw, a little glassy-eyed. Wait wow. a minute, we have 25 tonight. Congratulations, Jed, after a real step forward in football. But the funny thing was, even Bobby was saying, you know, it's funny, everybody's in Las Vegas, there's nobody here. And I'm thinking, this is actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the crowd that's here is loud. Yeah, they are. It's always been loud here. If, if, they, if this place is kind of full, it's, it's loud. Carlson starts right away. All right, let's see if Arizona can push. Can't you tell already, Ted, it's been 15 seconds, but more zip from Arizona. You can tell. Shot if they're going to be a little more intense this half. Right, there nice feed into Bala. Well, again, 17 is big, but if you score 97 a game, it doesn't feel as big. Not an uncontested three to start the half. Let's go into our leading score, Bala. And Carlson answers his second straight try. That's his seventh three-point attempt of the night so far. We got 19 minutes to go. 
Ooh, and Tubalis gets a little push with that left hand over in the ramp. Tough shot. Not, nice job by Carlson to stay vertical and not foul him. Tubalis with the better finish. Well, Tubalis again had a long stretch where he didn't play in the first half, but he has 11 points. And there, Larson. Well, Larson went straight up. Fast break, and Creasel will go in himself. Wow. And he came down with that. Yeah, I thought so too. The Estonia step, is that what we call that? Right. And a block by Bala, but a follow. Anthony can't get it down. And back comes Arizona. And immediately the pace feels faster. Timeout, Craig Smith, if that went in. Yeah. Little back door there, cut, but before that foul, Risa. Let's take a look at this. I, I'm pretty sure he came down before he shot this. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. You can get away with that in the NBA. That's really not the NCAA. Also taking it right at Balo. This time it's Balo's play to defend without fouling, and Carlson steps out. Arizona noticeably more engaged to start this half defensively. And so what does that mean? That means Utah's got to try and keep the pace the same, execute even more, and use maybe use more of the shot clock. I love the McLean thermometer. You can read that right away. Yeah. Just tell the body language. Yeah. Madsen, Anthony, but there for the finish, Ben Carlson. Carlson, the more this goes along, Ben Carlson is going to be even more valuable to this yeah. Utah team and be even more productive. Had a good night tonight so far. Play a whole lot in his two years at Wisconsin. That's what they're hoping he'll develop. Good shooting game. Are you ready, Ted? It just doesn't happen very often. I wish it happened more than it did. These officials are doing a terrific job tonight yeah. of letting them play, yes. calling what needs to be called, but let the game have some flow. Just looking around for Eric Curry, Delray Carr. here. <laughs> Eric Curry, Delray Carr, Tony Padilla. Yes. This is how it should be. That's a high level game. Number four team in the country. Let them decide it by playing, not by free throw shooting. Oh, nice. Larson. And two battles on a strong side. Can't finish, but there's Henderson. And yes, Arizona. Tommy Lloyd mirroring it with his gestures. You can see at the top of your screen. Interesting follow. There's energy. Yeah. Follow already out of the game. Henderson got that hook back. He came in for him. Marco Anthony on the drive. Looks like Arizona's gonna, gonna get this. There it, there it is. That's the play. That's what you get used to seeing when you watch Arizona last two years. The Bellas out ahead, lead pass finish. You just can't get it to 10, Arizona. I was gonna say, if Utah basket trades for a while, oh, yeah. I'm okay with that. Utah trade for the next 16 minutes. Trying to get it into Brandon Carlson. Carissa. Oh, and Carissa got the man. He got Wooster in a bad spot. And gets the foul, and it is going to be a... They're going to look to see whether it's two or three. From the first four minutes yeah. of the second half. He can cut this to nine. I'm assuming that gives Arizona a jolt to get it under 10 for the first time in a while. But he, of course, misses the first free throw, as I said that. Been one of those nights for Arizona. Guy shooting 90% from the line misses one. 
All right, so with those two foul shots, that's Arizona wins the first four-minute segment, plus seven. Utah's got to stick with the game plan. You don't have to play slow, but you don't want to be in a hurry and quick shot, because I opened the show talking about shot selection, and quick shots misses sends Arizona out in transition, and they're attacking you before your defense is set. Help Arizona, Bramey got going a little bit too. Teresa, shot he likes, right handed shooter, shooting moving to his left. Bramey's only got three points yes. so far tonight. Hit one three very early in the game. Look at Teresa, but then Kata got the ball back, and eventually it is a foul. And if that's two balance, it's his third. It is. Tabellis started finally looking like Tabellis here in the second half. Tabellis has 15 points, so he played 15 minutes. And he's going to wind up going out now with the third foul. Balo is returns. That's the beauty. You can bring a guy like Balo in for him. I'll tell you what, Arizona's done a good job on Madsen tonight. He's got no airspace. That was a major focus of their game prep. Three seconds. Every so often gets yeah, dusted off. See that one every very often. In the game prep by Tommy Lloyd's staff. That was seems to be a dominant theme. Knowing how to stop 55 for Utah. Well, he was kind of the my X factor coming into this. I thought you talked to. He got hot and made a bunch of threes. There you go. Good ball movement again. The Arizona strength. Starting to open up now for Arizona. Getting more Arizona-type looks than they yes. did in the first half. And that crowd recognizes the score is under 10 for the first time. Utah can't play the score now, though. they got to stay with what they've been doing. Don't worry about the fact that it's down to 8. Reach in. Hell ball, Ramey creates a hell ball possession, Arizona. Arizona's bench not only a light, but let's watch this again. Uh, on the curl, Ramey to ball, they are so good at that. It's a pick your, it's, it's pick your poison. If you stay with Ramey, that's what you get. You get ball on the finish. If you stay with Ballo, Ramey can pull up or shoot, get to the floater game. This is a, a rarity of the conference. It's a one-game trip. As Ramey feeds Larson, who's fouled, Arizona brought a whole nice contingent of boosters with them as well. And at halftime, they're all sitting there like they've been hitting the jaw. These are back to life now. These are tricky games, Ted. You know, I love that we went to 20-game schedule. And you had to fit them in somewhere. But for a team like Arizona, you figure it's going to be contending for the regular season championship. This game matters, and so does the one on Sunday. Riley Wooster's third foul. Adds to this run now. Seven straight points for Arizona. Ben Carlson and Kata come back in. Wooster stays on the floor. So Smith is not going to, at least right now, not going to take him out with three. Arizona shot 27% in the first half. They're shooting 75% in the second half. Or, or Arizona like numbers because they're getting more Arizona like shots. Again, the pick and pop, and Brandon Carlson knocks down. They needed that. His fourth three of the game, 15 points. Felt like the momentum was really shifting towards Arizona. Big shot from Carlson. The set by Kresa. Instead of trying to get to the high-low game, they are now putting ball in ball screens and attacking downhill. That's another either or. Kresa could have shot the little runner. If Carlson doesn't rotate, he drops it off. Ballo gets the end one. It's third foul of Brandon Carlson. 
that point you just raised on is a great one. And that's something I found out seeing Arizona today for the first time. That's Tommy Lloyd, one of his moves with Priest this year is to get in the paint yeah. like he did there and shoot it. Don't just be a spot-up guy. Get downhill. You, you can still kick it out, but look for your own pull-up game or runner floater game. Everybody uh, thinks about Steph Curry as a guy that can nail it from 35, but what a brilliant guy he's been in, in those shots. Oh, he's a finisher. He's unbelievable with his change of speed, change of direction. That's the kind of shot that I was being talked to Tommy a little bit about it. That's what you know, want to have Grisa mix that in. I didn't run. Grisa only made 20 two-point baskets yeah. all of last year. It was a whole year. Completely spot up and threes off the dribble. Matherin was the one that attacked the paint and got to the rim in a lot of twos. Foul on Balo there, his first. Intensity ratchets up on both sides. You get a few more fouls now in the early part of the second. And a bunch of players, Brandon Carlson and Wooster with three, both on the floor for Utah. Bell is sitting, and Vasar had three for Arizona. Arizona switching all actions on the perimeter now, unless it's Balo. Switching one through four. Henderson be in the four or Larson. Well, this is heading into or close to a timeout zone again. This is part of that halftime shot therapy. This is what Tommy Wood would want. They're back in the game. And the game really hasn't gotten fast. Arizona's defense has just been better here in the second half. Randy missed. Nice rebound, Ben Carlson. A spot up three, exact. See, that's a shot. It better go in because yeah. look what happened to Arizona. Comes Larson. The transition defense, Utah, to get back in it. Right. Great, tough shot that got affected, but Henderson is fouled as he secured the loose ball. Ben Carlson fouls. You're right, you can see that. As soon as Pelo Larson had that read, that boom. Yeah. Four guys racing. You know, you know, that, you know, that shot by Zach is a good shot. It's a throw ahead pass transition. He's wide open, but if it doesn't go in, usually it's a problem when playing Arizona. Right, heading towards a timeout. Frank Smith takes Wooster and Randy Carlson out of the game to protect them for that very moment right there. Make sure they don't get the able to foul. But it's Madsen who does. Ooh, Carissa lost it. Stefanovic defended. And exact finishes. Uh, that's what they need to get this crowd back into it, too. Foul there. You know, I'm looking at exact for the first time. He has a little bit of a look of, of Luke Dort to me. One year, yeah. Luke Dort played at Arizona State, where you see that body that goes to Northwest Africa. Spent two years there, then two years in Mexico City at the NBA Academy, yep. then two years in Spokane at Gonzaga, and now in his second year in Tucson. You talk about someone who had to grow up fast, leaving his home at age 13. Last night, he and Adama Ball, his teammate, having dinner here in Salt Lake City, they speak French to each other. What's interesting about Ballo's situation what if Coloco didn't make that huge jump last year? Coloco might still be on this team, right? He had such a great year. He left for the NBA. But this is the, and I think the point, and I thought the story today did a great job of emphasizing, this is Paulo's fourth year in college. Two years at Gonzaga, now his second year in Arizona. So not everything happens right away, as Tommy Lloyd said. Development can still happen. Yeah. It turns out if you get better, you play. Ben Carlson is fouled inside. Does. Made some marks. 
more than I might have thought as on the offensive boards in this game. And their offensive rebounder generally is Marco Anthony. He's has four of those in this game, but they've had some others chip in. Well, because of the gaudy offensive numbers of Arizona, other stuff doesn't get talked about as much with Arizona, and that's one of them. I mean, Ballo and Cabela is really physical in the paint on both boards. You have to match that. If you're going to beat Arizona, you can't let them bully you. Utah's done a pretty good job of that tonight. Ben Carlson at the line. His backstory from uh, the Twin Cities, from the suburb of Minneapolis, St. Paul. Craig Smith is also a Minnesota himself, so we're going to there. Went to Wisconsin for a couple of years, they didn't play much. And he's the one guy, as I said, he's the one starter this year for Utah, just right now. He's the one starter that wasn't a starter last year. Yep. Well, they're in position. This is going to be a fascinating last. 11:35. They got an eight-point lead. But you just feel like Arizona is right there. Can Utah hold them off? Dallas back in the game for the Wildcats. Teresa lets launch. Well, now here's an interesting moment right here. Utah can score in this trip. They get it back to double digits. One for seven on the night for Teresa. Arizona is two for 17 from the three-point line. 45 percent coming in as a team. Carissa got caught on that switch. Carissa fouls Brandon Carlson. I understand why those weren't fouls in the first half, and now they are. That means now, with 11 minutes to go, every foul the rest of the game will be shooting. Six on each team. NBA step back for Matt. How about that? And then that was nicely done. Brandon Carlson kept that rebound alive off to Bellis. That was the NBA one dribble slide by Matson. That was a travel. That's not a travel in the NBA. Trip, but now it's back to a yeah, one of his one of his only clean looks of the night. Utah or Arizona's been doing a good job on him. Foul on exact, so getting a lot of the whistles now. Again, plays that weren't called necessarily in the first half. Well, We're gonna get into the one and one. Arson went to for the steal. Can't do that with guys like Matson. They will make you pay, and he did that time. Brennan missed. Nice play. Right, yeah. Madsen from the floor saves it. Ted, I know you haven't done so many games with you. You're a big fan of the one and one at the free throw line. <laughs> well, Craig Smith brought that up today. <laughs> it makes no sense, but that's another story for another time. Ten, well, we, need, we need to tiptoe into the soapbox <laughs> uh, stances. Ooh, how about that deep one? Oh, how about that fake? Fifth three. Fifth three for Brandon Carlson. Possession could have gone any better for Utah. Wow. All the way down on the shot clock. Made three. Craig Smith comes flying off the bench with a clenched fist as Tommy Lloyd is called a timeout. Uh, Brandon come program. If they can hold on and win this. Not just for this season. But Craig Smith in his second year, early in his second year, historic win it would be for Utah. And a, really a nice moment for Craig Smith. As Tubelas goes in, took a bump there and won. Chada bumped him. And they give up the continuation play there, which I will smile about. <laughs> it's a great job. Tubelas will have the end one chance. Well, we talked about how good Balo is and getting to contact and finishing to Bellis pretty good at it too. Great 
Chubelis. It's 18 points now for Tabellus tonight. But what a difference in this game from the first possessions when Brandon Carlson was positioning at the line. Look at Henderson up there. Smacking down Marco Anthony. But not no a technical foul. No way. Don't know. He must have been. He must have said something. I take we will tell. It's a really good block. Yeah. Well, nice by Gabe Madsen. I take back what I said in the first. You half. could probably. You could probably hear a Utah fan sitting right behind us who just said, let him play the game. That's it, makes one. Uh, 9.39 to go, you're Utah. Now you can't play the score the other way. You can't be saying to yourself, well, we're up double digits. Let's just use clock. You got to keep playing at this point. Now Carlson, he's been terrific outside. There he is again. Look where Carlson on right exactly. Now. Yeah. So uh, indicator. That, that's what he'll get better at as time goes on, finishing those plays. Similar to Balo. Balo's gotten better. Now Arizona just nothing tonight. Yeah. And really. The fact that Ramey, who was on see, fire, and now he has not been shooting tonight. To, when you're used to playing a certain speed, a certain pace, and everything's in rhythm, now when you're out of rhythm because the game's gotten choppy, you're not going to shoot it as well. And that's been the case for Arizona tonight. 20 points for Brandon Carlson. And at some point, does Arizona just... That point's getting close because you're 14. Didn't feel so bad when there were 17 minutes to go. Right. Now you have eight and a half to go. And I think now Utah will, will start intentionally using some clock every possession. Adson going to his left and one. That's not a dagger. But that may be a standing eight count. A chance to make an 18. He has got really good footwork. On the catch and shoot stuff and off the bounce. That step back was really nice. <laughs> step back, 22 footers. You know, when, wow. you know when you have a good step back, Ted? Is when you get fouled on it. Why? Because you're covering ground. There's more ground for the defender to catch up to. So they lunge at you. And end up fouling you all the time. 18 is the lead for Utah. 19 was their largest. To Bellis off the feet from Ramey, it doesn't go. What? You don't need to force that in there at that point. Way too early in the clock. Look at Tubelis handling himself. A bit of that body language I know, fading for Arizona. I know you want to get it into Brandon Carlson, but you don't have to. Marco Anthony on the Euro. Yep, exactly. I said we've had a lot of stepping tonight, haven't we? <laughs> So that's the largest lead. And man, what a response by Craig Smith coming out trying to get the entire arena up. You talk Craig about Smith, the cheerleader. You talk about what this can do. And Carlson had never made more than two three-pointers in a game. He had never tried more than five in a game before tonight. Look, Look at this, those numbers. This is by design tonight. This ain't a fluke. It's not, he was just open. That was intentional to get him open at the three-point line. And it has to be right, Don, to keep that big guy, bring him out. Yeah. Force him to come out. Oh. 
If he's going to be the physical one in the paint, what's your counter? Make him get out on the perimeter and guard. Booster only thing, blocked by Ballo. Only thing that hurts you right now if you're Utah is live ball turnover. Air ball, K down. Well, I think you're gonna have to look at that one. Not sure. Delgrade Carr's initial call is a violation, but they're gonna look at it. I don't think he got it up there. In time. I don't either. Let video. Uh, you got to manage it. You got to still get some stops. You just don't make any mistakes on the other end. All right. So confirmed the basket. Even for an explosive offense like Arizona, 18 down with six and a half to go. That play is opened up in the second half, yes. I'll tell you that. Well, you, you made a great reference earlier. You didn't get a chance to finish it, but Loyola, the famous Loyola Marymount team. Up. That's going to be a block. No offense, I'm sorry. Did you call that an offensive? Called it a illegal screen on Carlson. Oh, an illegal screen, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was on Wooster. No, it's on Carlson just sliding in. And... Yeah. Utah's side does not like that. Just, be, just because the defender falls down doesn't mean it's a foul. That's a flop. You want to call a flop and give a guy technical? That should have been on Ramey. That was, uh, that's the opinion here in the building. Fourth foul on Brandon Carlson. And there's Creason with the shot we were just talking about. That little floater, teardrop, whatever phrase you want to use. But what I was going to say, Don, about the Loyola Marymount, the famous uh, Bo Kibble, Hank Gathers teams, was Paul West had the coach. His whole thesis, he was basically analytics ahead of its time. Yeah. He said the more possessions, the better. Ben Carlson follows and is fouled. And Paul Westhead's view, defense was, we'll go for a steal in five seconds. And if we don't get a steal, then we'll just relax. The more possessions, the better. Right now, Utah wants to flip that. Yeah. If any team could do it, like I said, it's Arizona. 5.53, they've gotten a quick five here. Yeah. So you want less possessions. But a mistake that, you know, wasn't an intentional mistake, but a mistake on the illegal screen by Carlson. That's a turnover. Right. And now Arizona scores. That's how Arizona is going to give themselves a chance. Get stops, get turnovers, and then score at the other end. Oh! oh! Missed time by Ballo, and it cost. Kata takes advantage. And Ballo gets it back at the other end. But again, basket training doesn't help Arizona. And now you see Craig Smith holding it up and he's trying to orchestrate. <laughs> I don't think you'll shoot. I don't think you'll see a Utah possession where they shoot it outside of 10 on the clock the rest of the game. No. Right into the hands of Ramey, who has a breakaway. Anthony contests, but Ramey scores. Those are the mistakes. Live ball turnovers lead to quick scores. Go, oh, another one. Ramey got his hands on that. Ramey wants to make it work. Uh -oh. Yes. Well, that's just about. You're in the ICU unit, but the heart's still beating. Now there is time. Got to settle the game now. I was expecting that. So timeout for Utah. Every foul the rest of the way will be a two-shot foul. So now it's 7361. So where you start looking, Utah. Team foul shooting is 69%. Obviously, individuals vary within that, but that's going to most likely be a in play here. You mentioned it, Ted. The one thing for Arizona, they got to get stopped without fouling. That's it. Don't leave him. No, nope, that's off. You see, that was wide. 
Ramey was down the left wing, didn't get the ball, now gets it in the corner. And hits, and Ramey getting hot at the right time for Arizona. Now it's really doable. Utah needs to score desperately. When's the last time they scored? And they don't get it. Carlson's shot doesn't go. Ramey looked like he wanted a three. Yeah, he's going to kick it back for Larson. Ooh. Big miss for Larson. He makes that. Who knows what happens? What still might happen? Now number 14 in the country, coming off a significant three games in Hawaii. And a Utah team, Utah program that is rebuilding and looking for its signature, its first signature win. It's three minutes and 24 seconds away, and it will be filled with the line here for Utah again. Everything's a two-shot foul. Both ways. Has not had a good foul shooting night time, but that makes seven of 14 as a team. 69% as a team coming in. So not, not terrible. That's right, a booster season number coming in. These This game's a little different than the games they've played previously, though. Conference game playing the number four team in the country. More pressure on those free throws than this one. Set up to Tubelis. Henderson was crashing the offensive board to try and keep it alive. Arizona playing this stretch here. Balo is not in the game. They've got to settle it. Wow, look at that move by Carlson to get out of that. And Stefanovic, no. Now Arizona has some numbers. Spot up by Rainey. They find him in transition. Nice play. Stefanovic smacked it off to Bellis. Well, there's been a couple threes that Utah have gotten away with. Rainey that one, Larson the one before. Well, that last play, Don, was what you were talking about with Craig Smith today. Marco Anthony's crashing the offensive board, so Arizona had four and three. Yeah. And Anthony, no. Pull it back. I like the decision to yeah. not try and score that. You'd rather more time come off than another two. You're up 11. Madsen's late one. That did hit some iron and a foul because Anthony was there. That desperation shot hit iron. And Marco Anthony's offensive rebounding pays off. Nice job by Madsen just to get something up there that hits the rim to give your team a chance to get an offensive rebound. If it doesn't hit, hit the rim, it's a shot clock violation. Real uphill now for Arizona. Right. Again, every little lifeline helps Arizona, but we hit the two minute mark now. Can't run a whole lot of offense. Oh, Ramey's got it open there, right there. Tough shot for that foul yes. line jumper. He's inside the foul line, but I know you, you keep reminding me of that. What we all think is easy isn't so much. No, that's that's that shot against the Washington zone we always yes. talk about. Yes. It's not really. Arizona has one timeout. <laughs> Tommy Lloyd discussing and drawing up this play, but also make or miss what's going to happen with your defense. Yeah. 
to Bellis inside. Rattled around out and then a foul on Henderson. Shall each miss there for Arizona just Utah's got to make some free throws. Yeah. Close this out. They're missing too many. You can tell though. These are free throws to close out the number four team in the country. Yes. It's on eight for 17 tonight. And I know every time I get out my one on one soapbox, even say I can tell Greg Smith was ready to say, well, you know, the easiest answer is just make your free throws. Right. Which is what happens in the NBA. In right. the NBA, fouling's not an issue because everybody makes their free throws. Yep. Now the crowd now look at Craig Smith as two balance scores but Craig Smith is on the sideline and he's literally in a very positive way the cheerleader he's getting everybody up the significance of this he lost their shoe yeah <laughs> and it's Marco Anthony you can just let this run out there you go but that's an easy two for Wooster well, that that's a story that you picked up on early. Kirk Creason with the ball right now had a triple-double on this floor last year. Rowley Wooster has come close tonight. 12 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists. Interesting. Wow, what a win for Craig what Smith in Utah. Yeah. And remember, as I mentioned the first half, this is not his team. He's turned the roster pretty much completely. It's his team, and in a place that loves basketball so much, that has so many banners of greats hanging up top here. This is that win that gets you going. And in a season where football has been another great story on this campus. I have a feeling this game is going to galvanize Arizona. Yeah. something like this and for Utah what a night a first half that they'll remember forever it's in a first half that goes in the vault of how well oh, they yeah. played and they took a couple of hits from Arizona in the second half but withstand and looked like Arizona was gonna come back and they just never let it happen great game plan coming in we talked about that all night but then guys making shots Carlson Making threes. Wooster, I thought, was terrific tonight.